Sir Peter Blake's vision and determination made him a New Zealand hero. He was undoubtedly our greatest yachtsman, a brave adventurer, and a passionate environmentalist. But overall, he was an incredible leader. Sir Peter's impressive achievements put New Zealand on the world stage. I just remember him as being very humble, uh, but inspiring man. He had great dreams and he just went out and made them happen. Sir Peter Blake allowed Kiwis to dream that anyone can actually achieve this. This is the story of his lucky Red Sox, how they played a part in winning one of the most sought after cups in yachting, and why we use them today to remember Sir Peter Blake. Sir Peter was a regular Kiwi guy who grew up in Auckland. From an early age, he developed a love for the ocean. Sailing became an early passion, and he was only seven when he began racing competitively. When I um, started sailing, I desperately wanted to sail around the world with Peter Blake. It took him five attempts to finally win, in record time, all six stages of the Whitbread Round the World Yacht Race. So there we have it. A 17-year commitment is over for Peter Blake. He has done it. He has won his first ever win. Four years later, he raced the catamaran Enza non-stop around the world and won the Jules Verne Trophy, breaking another record. They've done it. 74 days, 22 hours and 17 minutes, and none more thankful than Peter Blake himself. Well, I tell you, the last 24 hours has been probably the toughest 24 hours of my life. Having charted 28,000 miles of ocean non-stop and against extraordinary odds. Sir Peter's next goal was to win the greatest of all yacht trophies for New Zealand, the America's Cup. His wife, Lady Pippa, often gave him good luck socks to wear during his campaigns. When New Zealanders discovered this, many thousands of people started wearing red socks to keep the team winning. The boats are black, but the country's going red. From the waterfront dum, 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 dum. <laughs> to the beehive, the red soccer is mobilising. Its soul is nationwide. Across the supermarket counter, not to mention H&J Smith in Invercargill, the Ekatahuna Community Store and Kids Patch in Dargaville. The only time that we lost a race on the water was uh, when I wasn't on board. The socks weren't there. So you may say we're terribly superstitious. Well, yes, we are. The trick worked, and on May 14, 1995, Peter and his team won the America's Cup. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. International sport's oldest prize leaves the United States, this time to a different down under, New Zealand. It's taken four challenges, 10 years and around $90 million to reach this magic moment. But for the Kiwi sailors, the long, hard slog to success has reaped the ultimate reward. Little old New Zealand, I think that no one uh, thought we'd get anywhere, has just won the America's Cup. It's only the second time in history that it's left America. I think that's pretty damn good. The great leader and his team returned home as heroes. Peter Blake's red socks were now symbolic of one man's pride and determination. Here it is, the America's Cup is in New Zealand. The old mug with Peter Blake on the right, Russell Coots on the left. What a sight, what a day for New Zealand. The proudest moment of your life? It's a very, very proud moment indeed. In 1999, the world watched when Auckland hosted the next America's Cup. I remember standing in my lounge watching the TV and seeing the hordes of people across the viaduct and I looked up onto my mantelpiece and I had my red socks there and I just thought, this man, Peter Blake, what an inspirational leader. With his inspirational leadership and focused confidence, along with meticulous planning and his red socks, Sir Peter again won the cup for New Zealand. We've just won the America's Cup again. Oh, Peter. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> oh, not bad, eh? Indeed, some say it's this is Blake's best. I guess success. Oh, yeah, we're there. The following year, Sir Peter Blake retired from yachting to draw the world's attention to environmental issues. During his global races, he noticed the amount of pollution in the world's oceans and became concerned with the health of the sea. 
when we'd sailed around the oceans, he'd seen what was happening to the oceans and he wanted to make a difference. He wanted his legacy to be more than just a guy who won a bunch of yacht races. He felt compelled to educate young people about the environment. So he created Blake Expeditions and sailed to some of the world's most endangered waterways to highlight the problems he found there. On December the 6th, 2001, while on an expedition at the mouth of the Amazon River in Brazil, pirates stormed his vessel and tragically shot him dead. Even though this great man's life ended at just 53 years of age, his legacy lives on in all of us. We wear his red socks to remind us of his values and vision and to take on the challenge to become strong leaders like our great hero, Sir Peter Blake. The whole concept is very powerful to the New Zealand psyche, to the way we see ourselves. And it's a demonstration, of, yes, it is possible. That is the real legacy of Peter. That's the power that he's given us as New Zealanders to know that at that level of performance, we're capable of.